Okay, there we go. And... <clears throat> Let me see. Side, 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 side. Gotta fix the side. Okay. Oh, uh, that's not quite... That doesn't seem quite acceptable. I think I'll have to... There! Excuse me. <clears throat> How's everyone doing today? Get my good old Parasite Eve 2 mouse pad out. You just, you just can't play a game with any other kind of mouse pad. I mean, you can always just use your knee, but... Ah, Let's see, I actually can't, I actually can't, there we go, now I can read it. Oh, well, I'm doing great. Ah, we've started a war, and now we're going to have fun with our war. So, let me see. Hmm. I had several people tell me I can click on my avatar and change my image. Hmm. I see. Such variety! How will I ever choose between these um, epic pieces of artwork? <laughs> Boy, where do I even want to begin? Do I want to begin in the battlefield? Do I want to sneak around in the camps? Do I want to check out some of these other places? Ah... Oh. Mmm. Cars exist? Wait, cars exist? I want a car. I'd like to start with the conspicuous absence of pirates, but apparently they're not there. Like, where did all their structures and things go? I'm guessing that the pirates, uh. Eh, they were probably all assassinated by ninjas. It happens. New pirates will show up inevitably. There's always more pirates. We'll never run out of those. Hmm. Where to begin? Let's start with the... Let's start with this and work our way around in a circle ending in the battle. No, let's go into the battlefield first. Well, game's all like, you sure you want to do this? Uh, uh, you sure this is a good idea? Yes, I'm sure. War, man. Like, wow. You, as you step toward the battlefield, decked out in war hippie regalia, and ready for battle, a hippie taps you on the shoulder. Hey, man. Like, wow, man. You almost went out there without any gear, man. Take this stuff, man. There's a lead pipe. That's for hitting frat boys with, like, wow, man, war, man, war! Oh, uh, and here are some water pipes that Jerry's boys rigged up with fuses. Those are for blowing up frat boys with. And then here are some wind chimes. Uh, what are those for? The wind talkers back at HQ use them to communicate with soldiers on the battlefield, man. If you need a medic or want to call in a ferret strike, just bang on the chimes. But don't do it too often, man. If you try to take more than your share, it won't be enough to go around, man. Oh my gosh. The wind chimes. Summons hippie army aid. Combat item reusable. Used by the army of one love to communicate over vast distances. Well, for certain definitions of vast. Within earshot, let's say. Incidentally, for those who don't know, Wind Talkers were in World War Two. I believe it was they 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 had their their uh, you know their radios that they were communicating back and forth with the military was, and the Germans kept cracking all their codes. I believe it was that they couldn't come up with a code that the that the Nazis couldn't crack. So what they did, what the U.S. military did was they found a tribe of Native Americans with a language that just bared no resemblance to any other known language, I guess. And they just said, okay, you're just gonna, we're just gonna put one of these guys in every unit that talks to each other through their language. 
And the German code breakers are all like looking for some code that's based on the English language. And they're like, well, what's the code? What's the code? And they could not find a code because it was just some some language they'd never heard before. That's what I believe the wind talkers were. Uh, you could probably get a far more in-depth story that and way more accurate if you look it up. I think there are even movies based off of it. But anyway. Hmm. Let me see. All right, let's take a peek at what we just got. So an oversized pipe doesn't really fit in with my build, does it? Hmm. Hmm. Pretty good, actually. The hippies use this to mess up people's heads. Ah, uh, hmm. And then we have these neat new items here. But how good are they really compared to just blasting spells at things? This isn't it. Where is it? Miscellaneous, perhaps? Combat items. Okay, I might actually go a little overboard here for this. It only does 55 to 75 damage. Ah, uh, that's nothing. That's nothing. The hippie army has retrofitted these glass sculptures with fuses and capped the ends, effectively turning them into pipe bombs filled with foul-smelling water. See, oh, hey, look, I can throw them down a plot hole. This thing, it just doesn't add up. Uh, yeah, I don't think any of my combat items are worth using, honestly. Well... Let's see. I have potions. I think it's time, though, that I just go wild. So for 20 adventures, I can have from Nantucket. This is a scrap of paper with body limericks written on it. Body means deeply offensive, but written in archaic language, so no one cares. I see. I will use all three of these. Whatever little bit that gives me. Okay, what else can we do? I've got these thin black candles. Uh, I mean, mysticality plus 10, that's not bad. The muscle will give me more hit points. I'll lose some of my moxie for some reason. But it's probably a net benefit considerably. All right, let's see. Well-swabbed ear. A small cotton swab designed to clear the ear of, clean the ears of pirates. Why do you need a special swab to do that? Well, it's got a specially curved handle so it doesn't get caught in earrings. And it's got a little piece of carrot on the end to distract any parrots that may be on your shoulder while you're cleaning your ears. Whatever, we have a well-swabbed ear. Swab. Pirates love swabbing things. Decks, ears, they don't care. They'll swab anything. Squat Thrust Magazine. I think this is actually a permanent bonus from reading these. All right, let's see. Spooky Sound Effect Records deal spooky damage every round in a permanent Halloween. I'm going to just use everything. We're going to go through this battlefield and we are just going to be lords of destruction. I don't trust things. I don't, don't know what they do, though. Hmm. This is a piece of the roof from the Orcus frat house. It should probably be called a rooflet, I guess. But do you really expect frat boys to use English properly without a cheat sheet? Rumor has it that the frat boys use these to knock people out and do horrible things to them. Hmm. Why is that under potions? That should be a combat item, shouldn't it? Oh, well. Probability potion. Don't trust random things. Uh, yes, I would love to have resistance to everything. I wonder if I just put in an asterisk. Do you think it'll just use as many as possible? 
Whoops, pain dip. Um, these little packets of flavored sugar. That can, oh yeah, I've read this one before. Um, no. There we go, old rose water cream. It's a skin cream modeled after ancient Roman cosmetics. And old enough that it might as well actually be from ancient Rome. An old eyebrow pencil. Cool, we'll do it. <laughs> We're just gonna do everything. Old bronzer. I'll use that. Anything that gives me more initiative is super, super welcome. If I get the first turn, I probably win. If they get the first turn, I might not. Oh, really? Now and earlier, let me see. I think this was a sugar rush, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, anything that gives me initiative, even if I kind of don't want the penalty to my mis uh, mysticism. Look at all this stuff. Oh, but we're not done yet. We keep going. The mostly broken sunglasses. I've been carrying those around all game. We'll add that in. Let's see. Moose thought for moose wisdom. When taxidermists are preparing a moose head for mounting, they have to scoop out the brain, and sometimes they run out of wadded up newspapers. They have to fill the cavity with moose thoughts written on scraps of paper. <laughs> yeah, 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 I saw that. Yeah, somebody posted that to Discord. Was it you? I was all like, hey, cool. Let's see. I gotta remember, I have this milk. Come on. Mix Icy Vapor Hotness Rub. Come on. Ooh, minus 50% combat initiative. No, thank you. Oh, hey, Chalk. I was using this a while ago. Never fumble. Yes, please. Ah, okay. Yeah, no, it's it's announced. They didn't really tell us anything about it, but the fact that they're developing it makes me happy. Let's see. Effect, you don't know. Alchemy is a process, you know, and in this particular case, that process got interrupted. Deal sleaze damage every round. If there's one thing nastier than mayonnaise, it's mayonnaise later. Okay. I'll do it. Everything. No tactic is too horrible. No tactic is too gross. We'll do everything. Ginger snaps? Yes. We will use our ginger snaps. Hmm. Plus 50 spooky damage. That was one of the earliest items I found. Muscle, my, yep, let's use those. Oh, I forgot my daily dungeon yesterday. Ah, we'll have to make sure we do that today. I think we've almost used everything. Wait, deodorant? That sounds like the opposite of what we want here. Let's see. More sugar rush. I'll do it. Boy, I've gotten this way down to almost nothing. Hmm. Chalked weapon for ten rounds. I think yes. Bottle of rhinoceros hormones. Sure, why not? More hit points. Bent scrap metal. Damage reduction of 10. Heck yeah. I'll take armor plating. And we're done. Okay. That was a lot of stuff. Look at this all. Uh-oh, I'm confused. Oh, that's bad. Hmm. Well, it'll go away in five. Almost everything except the mascara will last more than five, so... Bloody, bloody, bloody. Oh my gosh. So, we are... Holy crap! 
to the battlefield. You're fighting Warfrat 151st Infantryman. This is a member of the Frat Army's 151st Infantry Division, effectively called the Roaring Drunks. Actually, it's not particularly affectionate, since they're known for their incredible alcohol tolerance and their incredible propensity for violence. And remember, they're frat boys. Imagine the kind of violence and alcohol tolerance that a frat boy would have to find impressive. Look at my max health right now. <laughs> Kaboom! <laughs> That's not even a good spell. That's just my usual... Oh, look at my max MP right now. <clears throat> Warfrat Keg Rider. This cavalry unit is... It's a cavalry unit. <laughs> it's a frat boy riding atop a beer keg, which is on top of a furniture dolly. He waves a beer bog around his head and shouts a piercing battle cry full of white boy gangsta angst. He's looking for something to break, and he's just found you. You mean I have just found him. Your, oppo your opponent is as grossed out as you are by the disgusting coating of mayonnaise on your skin. Warfrat, 110th in Infantry. This frat boy is a member of the 110th Division. You know that there's a whole bunch of frat boys, but no universities? What, what are they studying? What are they studying for? Does anyone know? <laughs> I guess they're studying alcohol to get a degrees in boozonomics. This division is known for painting their bellies with war paint getting rip-roaring drunk and sitting on the sidelines of the battle, eating chips and shouting instructions to the actual soldiers because they sit in weird little armchairs with only, only one-fourth of a back. They're commonly known as armchair quarterbacks. They're not usually violent, but you're blocking this one's view of the battle and he's ready to throw down. Nothing can fight me. Nothing here can fight me right now. I am completely invincible. The 500th Infantry Gentle... There is no such thing as a frat boy gentleman. What? No. This frat boy is a member of the 500th Infantry, known among themselves as the Fortunate 500s. They are by far the wealthiest of frat boys, and by far the most arrogant. They were born with a silver spoon in hand. This guy's father could have easily arranged him not to serve in combat, but he won't allow it! He saw war as an excellent opportunity to prove he was better than everyone else. Plus, he might run for office someday. Imagine the publicity benefits if he manages to be captured as a POW. Well, that won't be happening. He'll have to make do with some Purple Hearts instead. Bottle opener belt buckle. An accessory that damages attacking opponents. Both fashionable and functional. The belt buckle with a bottle opener welded to it is... Well, I guess I wouldn't go so, call, so far as to call it fashionable, but at least it's functional. You really can open bottles with it, as long as you don't mind running the wish, ri risk of smashing the butt end of a bottle into your crotch, and you're not worried about having a sharp piece of metal jutting out of your waistband. Just don't do any slow dancing with this thing on, if I were you. Hmm. Sorority nurse. This is like a pre-med student at whatever university... Th I was just asking about that. And she, like, joined a sorority because sisterhood is almost as important as, like, saving people. And the frat boys, like, totally recruited her to help out on the battlefield. And apparently we attack the medics in this battle. Sorority operator. This is sorority girl is like so good at talking on two cell phones, a landline, a webcam, and texting all at the same time that the frat boys like hired her to be the communication center for the war effort. She can like 
have 50 distinct conversations, all without saying anything intelligent or interesting? <laughs> ah, that's pretty amazing. Wish I had that kind of wild skill. And now their communication center is down. Hey, what's this? This is one of those class rings worn by high-ranking officers in the Brotherhood of the One to indicate their superiority over the rest of the frat. It's got a big white stone in it and a phrase, In Vino Secus, carved into the platinum setting. Cannot be traded or discarded. But it's also not an accessory, so I don't know what it is. I can't equip it. Oh, this summons frat army aid. Because of its tiny size and sizable trendiness, the PADL phone is a highly sought after by orcish frat boys. Even though they can't actually dial the phone with their fat fingers, since it takes pictures and plays music, the phone's capabilities are really just an afterthought, though. Hmm. Okay, let's see. I've seen you. He holds medieval insult. No, no, what I want is... Where is it? Communications wind chimes. Go! You bang a series of chimes, and after a few minutes, a squadron of biplane ferrets fly over your opponent in a seriously disgusting bombing run. He gets hit with 164 damage worth of, let's just say, projectiles. Do it again. Do it again. Nearby hippie soldier sees you about to start ringing the wind chime says, No way, man. You're taking more than your fair share. We all get equal attention from HQ because we're all equally special. Then he takes your t wind chimes and wanders off. Ugh, what a jerk. Oh. What a jerk! Fine. Let's see what happens if, while I'm wearing this costume, I try to call in the other team's stuff. A frat army HQ isn't likely to send you reinforcements in this particular fight. You probably shouldn't even bother. All right. Okay, I think I've seen all of the encounters here. We'll go through another six and see if anything else turns up. I am so freaking unstoppable right now. Oh, I took out another communication center. Very nice. All right. Now, for my next trick... No, wait, I meant, uh... Okay. Alright. Oh, I just got even more buffs. Holy crap. All the buffs. That's how many we need. All the buffs. I, what, what do you mean? I, I am in uniform. I'm totally in a uniform. Crap. I don't have a set to fight on their team. Alright, well, we're going to start with the lighthouse and work our way around. <laughs> Son of a beach. Sorry, but I don't have time to mess around with you right now. I'm waiting for the soldiers to come help me. Bumpity bump bump. Alright. Alright, here we go. Ah. Drat. Drat! Fine, we'll start on this side and go around the other way. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Alright, let's 
see. Them thar hills. Oh, thank heavens you've arrived. We need help, soldier, most desperately. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, what's the problem? This morning when Sister Medulla went to the daily donation deposit in our safe, she found it empty. Those filthy, thieving, dirty, rotten bandits from them thar hills stole all of our meat. We'd be ever so grateful if you get it back for us. If I'd steal it for myself, you mean? There may be meat in them thar hills, but there also are brigands, and the brigands have all the meat. Now they don't didn't get it by asking nicely for charitable donations. Yes, let's do this. One of the dirty, rotten scoundrels has stole all the meat from the coffers of Our Lady of Perpetual Indecision. He gets confused and accidentally mugs himself. You point and laugh as he lies unconscious. Mm, looks like some of my buffs have expired. I've lost about a hundred hit points worth. It's fine, though. We still have plenty of awesome power. Sister Hippocampus approaches you and takes the meat. Thank you for covering this meat. Almost all the meat is still in the hands of those bandits. Please continue your efforts. I could probably just give you however much meat you lost. I mean, it is a lot, but, you know... Fornix, Fornix again. Another familiar? Mmm, you mean one who will give me meat? Actually, yeah. That's not a bad idea. Oh. Baby Gravy Fairy. Gives you more stats after combat. More met. All right, you. Hold on. I have a thingy. Yes. All the brigands are identical. That's okay, though. Wow, he's giving me like 50% more meat. That's no small thing. Almost all the meat is still in their hands? How many identical enemies must I fight for you? Good grief! I have all of these. I'm slightly larger than usual. You're slightly larger than usual, giving you the proportional speed, strength, and intellect of a moth. That's a lot of meat. Hmm. <laughs> well, I can speed this up slightly. You've recovered a good portion of the stolen meat, but there's still plenty left. Not for long. Ah, oh, cool, thanks. The polka of plenty. I see. Ow. <laughs> Worthless. You've recovered more than half of what was stolen. Yeah, we're getting it. <laughs> I gotta get the the frat boy war outfit somehow. I think I could just beat up any of random one and I'd steal all their gear, you know? But it just seems to never work out like that somehow. You're almost done. Almost. How long will I almost be done for? 
Oh my gosh. I begin to doubt you. Ah, oh, there we go. Thank you for the recovering the meat. I think that's the last of it. However, can we repay you for your assistance? Well, it would really help the war effort if you, your covenant could serve as a hospital for our wounded troops. Consider it done. Stop by whenever you need healing, and we'll be glad to assist you. Fix. Oh, you didn't recover MP. Oh, well, I have a permanent source of recovering MP or hit points, at least. That's convenient, I guess. Okay. So, I guess we should try McMillican Cuddy's farm now. Hmm. Oh my gosh, what is all of this? I don't know, last time I was in a granary I had to fight a miller. Right, last time I was near one of these. Ugh. And then there was the thing which was dreaming and ah. Uh, wow. Mmm. Doggone it. That's the one I need. Why is it the frat boys recover MP and these guys only restore HP? What's wrong with them? They're not magical enough. That's what's wrong. All right, let's go to the pond. The... Oh, here's something. A gen generic duck. For a second, I thought it said genetic duck. McMillican Cuddy's farm has been overrun by a flock of giant ducks. And this is one of them. It wanders towards you. Let me see. Hmm. Oh, 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 here's something. Ah, wait, no. Ah, my farm, it's overrun. Dukes all over it. Dukes? What are dukes? Dukes! Dukes, you stupid git! Great flapping beasts with wet feet and bills! Dukes! Hmm. Bonk. Take that, you evil dukes! Aha! You find yourself inside that pe thing's far barn with, the, with your back to a wall and a horde of ducks advancing towards you. Well, not so much advancing as milling around aimlessly, but getting closer to you nonetheless. Look around and see if there's anything you, that might be of use within your reach. You see a pitchfork, a cobweb, and a coil of barbed wire. Oh, not a cobweb, a cowbell. Ah, okay. Make a fence. You wrap yourself in a barbed wire cocoon and sit in the corner, rocking back and forth and muttering to yourself until the ducks get bored and decide to head off to the pond for a swim. Ah -ha 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 -ha. But what do the other options do? Oh. Once again, you find yourself backed into a corner, surrounded by a bunch of ducks. <laughs> This corner's a little more interesting, though. There's a lit lantern next to a pile of hay and a huge rusty bear trap. Got any ideas? Yes, let's set the bear trap on fire. Let's burn down his barn. <laughs> you decide to make Mrs. O'Leary's cow make like Mrs. O'Leary's cow and turn his barn into your private Dresden. Doesn't work, though. All you manage to do is splay flaming kerosene all over the ducks who honk angrily and run towards the back 40 like their heads are on fire. Which they are. Okay. All right. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. Here you are again, on your own, in the corner of this stupid barn, with another bunch of stupid ducks blocking your stupid progress. 
quick look around reveals a giant metal drum labeled Whacking Grease, on whose origins and purpose you don't want to speculate. Hanging on the wall beside the barrel is a double-barreled shotgun. Hanging behind the shotgun is a joke involving three barrels. Actually, not really, there's nothing hanging behind the shotgun. Whacking Grease! You unscrew the lid of the whacking grease barrel and tip it over. The horde of ducks is swept back to the other back 40 in a deluge of medicinal smelling goo. Blech. The sky turns suddenly gray and the wind rises. From the northwest you can see something approaching that looks like a white tornado. As it gets closer though, you realize it's not a white tornado, it's a real tornado. You ain't New York City, baby. No, I want it to be a ducknado. A ducknado. The funnel touches down, picks up the frozen ducks from the pond, and slings them eastward, beating them against the burning ducks in the back forty. And the ice and the ice covering and frozen ducks melt away as they continue to fly eastward, and this gentle rain, combined with the gales of wind, cleans the grease off a bunch of ducks in the other back forty. As the formerly frozen ducks continue their involuntarily high-speed eastward migration, the formerly flaming and formerly greasy ducks confer for a moment, decide they've had enough of this crap, and mosey into the sunset against the wind. Oh, the barn is no longer accessible. I am foolish. Let us do this. It's one of the ducks that got turned from the bar to the frigid waters. Uh, okay, yep, yep. He's decided to make the best of a bad situation. When life gives you ice, make ice water. And in some fashion, a pair of skates. Okay. Hmm. A chaos butterfly? Yes, I did unleash a chaos butterfly a long time. Uh, actually, not that long ago. Just yesterday, in fact. A frozen duck. Mm. It's, it's angry at an adventurer that's responsible. And in case you don't remember, an adventurer is you. It circles you and pushes you straight into the frigid pond. It's the worst ducking you've ever received. D dunk dunking, not ducking, dunking. Come on, game. You misuse of the... Oh, what's this? 80 to 120 frozen cold damage. This is actually the best combat item I've ever seen. Generally, if you're going to freeze a duck, you should take the feathers off first. Someone didn't follow this advice. And now you've got this frozen feather. I guess you could use it to tickle a snowman. I mean, if that's your thing. Hmm. Actually, I can probably just use... Oh, no. Nope, this doesn't hit hard enough. There are no more ducks here. A fire-breathing duck. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's from Sluggy Freelance. We're in one of those horrible... Horrible world ending futures. This is either a duck that started breathing fire after you did your lantern trick in the barn. Either it swallowed some of the flaming oil or the heat unlocked some sort of latent mutant power it had. Or the fact that it started breathing fire is a complete coincidence. No, I think somebody cast chaos channels on it. Hmm. A scorched duck. This is one of the ducks that got burned. Both in the literal and the zing sense. We did the lantern trick in the barn. It's pretty pissed, but then again, who wouldn't be? <laughs> bonk, bonk. This is just such a great spell. It's a spell for every occasion. It solves all your problems forever. You never need to use anything else ever again. Well, up, that's it. All that's left are greasy ducks. Oh. 
This duck is covered from head to toe. Do ducks have toes? In thick grease. And it's none too happy about this situation. It has a pretty good idea of who to blame for it. Puts its head under its wing, which is actually kind of cute. Then it puts your head under its wing, which definitely isn't. Wow, cold damage just disintegrated that one. Psh, greasy ducks, get out of here. Do you have a second type of duck to offer me? Or are they all just greasy? Flirtatious feather, 80 to 120 sleaze damage. This is a feather plucked from the kind of duck who doesn't wear pants and doesn't care who knows it. But ducks don't wear pants. I've seen Donald and various others. They never wear pants. Sleaze is weak to cold. Oh, is it? Ah, the ducks are, the dukes are gone. Thank ye, how can I ever repay ye? Hmm, how about dedicating a portion of the farm to growing soybeans to help feed the hippie army? Aye, aye, I can do that for ye. Oh, no. Aren't soy, like, the most devastating to the environment crop you can have or something like that? You sure the hippies want that? Oh, well, soy sauce is tasty. Let them have all of it. <laughs> all of it they can drink and then some. Do I even have a dime? How many do I have? I've got one. Oh, I can sell these things for dimes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, we got 12 dimes here. I could have a, a possibly edible meal. It's packed with food from all three hippie food groups. Soy-based, organic, and cruelty-free. Notice the absence of delicious. Hmm, fancy shell necklace sells for a thousand meat. This necklace made of seashells by a hippie soldier. When he made it, he was thinking about war, man, and how war made him feel, man. Apparently, it made him feel like making a crappy, useless necklace. Maybe he can sell it to a tourist or historian or something. Macabre net. 90 to 100 physical damage. It's coated the same sticky stuff that hippies use to slick their to stick their dreadlocks together. This will tangle you worse than that blue you got tangled up in that one time. Carbonated soy milk? Huh. Well, it restores MP. This is soy milk. Which is to say, it's a thick, opaque juice squeezed from soybeans. Just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, they carbonated it, making it so the bean juice flavor goes right up your nose when you drink it. The filthy poultice. It's what hippie doctors use to cure people's wounds. Not sure why I put quotes around wounds, sorry. Ferret bait. Since the hippies don't have an air force, they use sugar-addled ferrets strapped to miniature biplanes for aerial attacks. Hmm. That also sounds like something you'd see in for Sluggy Freelance. Something very similar to, anyway. Eh, alright. Well. Three blocks of mega tofu. Hmm. Well, it's not food, apparently. Mega tofu does not qualify as food. It does not qualify as alcohol. It doesn't go in your spleen. Oh, here it is. It's under miscellaneous. This is a block of free-range, cruelty-free, 100% organic tofu made of soybeans reaped using ancient homeopathic harvest rituals. Everything anybody has ever said about tofu can be said at double the volume about this tofu, and still not be an exaggeration. <laughs> I know tofu! <laughs> oh no, what is all this? 
Hatching chamber, feeding chamber, guards, and queens. Sounds a lot like ants. Oh, it's awful. The entire orchard is infested with filth worms. I mean, we knew we'd get some worms since we weren't using pesticide, but we never thought it'd be this bad. You could use some pesticide on... No, you can't. Well, I guess I'll just crawl down into their things and kill them one at a time manually. Can't we, like, train some, I don't know, meerkats and warthogs and lions? I hear that those things like to eat grubs. And maybe we could teach them to eat filth worms, too. Even though the filth worms in here are just babies, they've still got big enough hook fangs to disembowel anyone strong enough to fight them off. Trust me, there's no shame in coming back when you're a little stronger. Yes, there is. There is great shame in it. Oh, isn't this a cute baby filth worm? No, no, it's not. It's ugly as sin. It stinks like two-day-old two visitors from a four-day-old fish, and it's got all the personality of a rusty fish hook. That wasn't a very nice thing to say about the larva. It's just a larva, man. Ah, <laughs> uh, Dead Space 2 just stole those from Parasite Eve 2. And Parasite Eve 2 probably just stole the Splody Babies from something else. Seriously, I don't know what the hell's up with Splody Babies. They're like one of those standard enemy types, like imps or slimes. Less common one, but still. Filth worm hatchling scent gland. That's the second one I've gotten. Effect. Filth worm larva stench. Ten adventures. Ah. Okay. Of course. That sounds like something we'd rub all over ourselves. Oh, man. I didn't mention it once, but this is me mouse pad. Check this out. Oh, yeah. 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 Parasite Eve. Got some, got, got some pretty awesome stuff in it. But Parasite Eve 2 is the best. But I smell like them. Shouldn't I be able to pass myself off as one? Hmm. Maybe I need to go into one of these other ones. This is one of the filth worms charged with going out and gathering food for the rest of the hive. It does this by leaving the hive, finding food, and eating it, internally converting it into a foul green goo, and then regurgitating a portion of it for other filth worms to eat. Man, nature is nasty. Nature is also freaking terrifying. Seriously, scary, scary stuff is out in nature. You don't want to ever find yourself out in nature. No, we should all just remain inside our homes, as far away from nature as we can possibly get. I mean, nature tries to do horrible things to you, like infest you, or eat you, or make you breathe clean air. <sighs> Ah, guards won't let you in here unless you smell like food. Come on, give me some food. Some food smell. Oh my gosh. How many of my adventures am I going to spend up here? Ah, there we go. Filth worm drone scent gland. The scent gland from filth worm drone. Filth worm drones are large, slimy, and filled with foul-smelling green goo, which differs from the drone itself in a in that it is small, slimy, and filled with foul-smelling green goo. This 
There we go. That's the one I meant. Okay, we got Philform Drum Stench. Great. Just what we needed. Now we smell delightful. Filthworm Royal Guard. This is one of the Filthworm Hives. Royal Guards. They're like most Royal Guards, with the exception they don't have fuzzy hats. What they do have, however, is sharp teeth, foul odor, and a fierce dedication to protecting the hive. As long as they don't start eating people and then creating babies that have all their traits plus more. Ugh, that last arc of Hunter Hunter. This is the scent gland of Filthworm Royal Guard. Filthworm Royal Guards must be wrong a lot because they because if they were right glands, they wouldn't smell nearly as bad. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, okay, let's just use this. Okay. All right. We are fighting the Queen Filth Worm. Malfurion. Hmm. Never heard of it. This is the queen of all filth worms. I guess, if you have to be a filth worm, it's better to be a queen than a regular drone. But not as quite as good as not being a filth worm at all. She's bigger than the other filth worms. Wears a crown made of green goo and the stench. Well, have you ever been out in a rose garden on a nice spring day wearing clothes fresh from the dryer and really expensive cologne? And then you walk under a window ledge with a freshly baked ba apple pie cooling on it. Well, her smell would be the exact opposite. You forgot the freshly cut lawn! Alright, let's see. Can I one-shot her? I one-shot her. Heart of the Filth Worm Queen. Quest item. This is the heart that was once responsible for pumping green foul ickers through the veins of the Filth Worm Queen. Now it's responsible for stinking up your backpack. You should get rid of that thing. Is that... It is! The heart of the filth worm queen. You've done it! You've freed our orchard from the tyranny of nature. This is just groovy, man. We can reopen the produce stand, and hey, since you're responsible for that, I'd say you've enti you're entitled to a cut of the profits. I mean, we donated all to charity anyway, but you're like a charity, right? Heck. Now that we're thinking about profits, we should think about expanding our selection, too. I'll pick up some special stuff to add just for you. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Thanks. Yay! Profits! Socialist profits. Yay! Actually, this is pretty good. Having a source where I can buy all this fruit? Um, some of these are things I could, couldn't get. I mean, the olive, I could make an alcohol of some kind with that. The grapefruit was an ingredient to some as well. We don't have a cherry. Herbs. Lemons. Yeah, no, this is good to have access to. I need to find a place that sells spices. I used up all my spices on bean burritos, and I need a whole bunch more of them. But I guess I can't complain too much. I shouldn't expect this to be a pepper plantation, after all. I'll just appreciate that I got this. Nice thing. Oh, speaking of being able to scoop up free money... While we're on the subject of easy money, where's... Did I... Oh, right, over here. Easy money. Okay, excellent. I'm sure I'll find it sooner or later. Um, I see. Okay. I need to steal frat boy gear now. Give me your gear. You can't defeat me. You can't fight me at all. I'm invincible. 
It was nice when I was getting the first round every combat. It's kind of annoying that they get the hits on me sometimes now. This is my buff slowly going. Oh, here we go. Keg shield. Ah, oh, it doesn't say it's part of their gear set. Damage absorption of 50, though. Wow. This is an empty keg that has been hammered flat by hammered frat boys for use as a shield by the infantry of the Brotherhood. While alcohol may shield you from many things, unattractive members of the opposite sex, your inhibitions, the private pain that makes you feel numb inside, you'll find the keg that held alcohol works better against, say, weapons and projectiles. Did I find a... No, I haven't found any short guys in green yet. Or giant pig monsters. It's weird. I'm beginning to suspect that I'm not in Hyrule at all. Hmm, a grill sergeant. Crap, I wish I'd read the description of him. That's a new one. Ooh, war tongs. Darn, this doesn't say it's part of their war gear either. This is a pair of tongs used by grill sergeants of the Brotherhood. They spend so much time in the barbecue drills that they're perpetually red hot. This is because frat boys are always having barbecues when they should be studying. It's not a joke, it's the sad, sad truth. Plus 10 damage, hot, plus 10 damage to all hot spells is pretty nice, actually. Monstar Energy Beverage. Unleash your inner Monstar with Monstar. It's wicked hella extreme. Kind of makes you want to just throw it away instead of drinking it. There's like a ton of places in t just even regular places in town I haven't gone yet. So, you know. Darn. Guard are worn by sorority nurses. When they encounter a wounded frat boy, they remove it slowly and seductively and then apply it to the wound. No one's sure if the healing effect is psychosomatic or not, or if it's an a or if it's addict insane or not. Don't play that game. Here we go. This is one of the most skilled barbecue chefs the frat has ever seen. It's only natural that they'd recruit him as a combat cook. He can make wing sauce so hot that God himself couldn't eat it. He can cook a bar burger so the inside's well done and the outside's medium rare. And he can deep fry just about anything, including the fry oil itself. Never has flaming, burning death been so irresistibly tasty. Uh, no, I have sauces that are hot death, and they're irresistibly tasty. What in the world? You see one of the jerry-riggers placing landmines he made out of paper clips, rubber bands, and psychedelic mushrooms. A charging squad of frat boys trips them and is subsequently dragged off the field ranting about giant purple squirrels. I just need to get your outfit so I can explore your side of the conflict. I have no loyalty to- oh, here we go. How can this not be part of their attack combat gear? <sighs> you leap out of the way of a runaway mobile sweat lodge. Then watch it run over two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven frat boys. Ha ha ha. Hmm. Okay. Next generation of frat paddle, complete with holes drilled through it for minimal wind resistance. Its handle is ergonomically designed. Its striking surface is coated with high-impact Kevlar. Yep. Okay. Red class ring. Oh, lower level officers of Brotherhood. Ah, okay. Hmm. Well, it could be traded for some dimes. Flask flops. Plus 20% booze drops for monsters. Plus 3 maximum hooch? What do you mean? 
plus three maximum food pooch. Does that mean plus three to my drinking capacity? That would be huge if it does. Hmm. But I want to wear their equipment. I want to pretend I'm on their team. A few yards away, one of the jerry-rigger hippies detonates a bomb underneath the grill sergeant's grill. An entire squad of frat boys runs from the battlefield under an onslaught of red-hot coals. Ooh, what's this? War tender. This frat boy is one boo-slinging, bomb-drocking, shop troops of the Brotherhood of One. He can make any dr drink in the bartending book. Even the tricky layered shots and flaming cocktails. And it does it all while slinging, twirling, and juggling bottles full of booze. The fact that more booze ends up on him, the bar, and the patrons, and in the glass, doesn't seem to bother anyone, oddly enough. He duggles three sake bombs, then drops one. He bends over to pick it up. His cig cigarette lights the sake on fire, and he leaks back and looks embarrassed. Kaboom. I got a sake bomb. Oop, we're almost all out. Energy drink IV. It's an accessory. You can equip it. It restores 5 to 7 MP per adventure. This is not, as you expect, the fourth in a series of energy drinks. It's actually a plastic bag filled with energy drink and a tube connected to it, ending in a needle. I know what you're saying. You're saying, wouldn't it kill you if you injected something carbonated into your vines? And I'm replying, no, not at all. In fact, it would be delightfully refreshing. To all of those of you who are not medical professionals, do not inject things into your body. You would be surprised at the number of things that can kill you if in introduced into your veins directly. For example, air. <laughs> yeah. Not even a lot of air. Even just a little bit. That'll kill you. I'll kill your ass dead. Yeah, no. <laughs> but in this game... We're stupid and crazy, and I'm just going to equip this thing. <laughs> Nothing that we do in this game is a thing that you should do in real life. Ever. Darn. That's part of the gear. All right, I have to keep that on. <sighs> I guess I'll take this one off. Or put this on. No, I think it's about a hundred percent of things can and will kill you. Like, seriously. Try to think of something that can't kill you, and I'll tell you how it can. You think water can't kill you? You ever heard of drowning? Maybe drinking water can't kill you. Yes, drinking too much water can and has killed people. Anything. Absolutely anything. A pillow. Apparently you can be charged with assault with a deadly weapon. With a pillow. Because you can suffocate people with them. It's, it's like, there's like nothing that can't be a weapon. <laughs> Finally, some bumpity bump bump. Here I was, just minding my own business, trying to make a big boom. Big boom, bumpity bump. When all of a sudden a war breaks out. War! Bumpity bump bump. These pirates, they went away. But on the way out of their cove, they sank the ship that was bringing me my gunpowder. I need it. I need it for a big, big boom. Anyway, I tried to go down to Son of a Beach and see if any of it washed up. But those lobster frogmen down there are too tough for me to handle. Can you get it for me? Five barrels at least? <laughs> All right. I am foolish.
fish enough. While scouting along the beach, you encounter a band of frat boys. Strangely, they've traded their uniforms for swim trunks and surfboards. You approach the commander and ask what's going on. What's it look like, son? Surfing. My boys need some R&R. In &R. the middle of a war? I think it's a little risky for R&R. &R. If it's not safe to surf on the beach, it's safe to surf on this beach, he growls. Now, if I say it's safe to surf on this beach, then it's safe to surf on this beach. I'm not afraid to surf this place. Look, the waves break both ways. One guy can break right, one left, simultaneous. What do you think of that? You prefer the, a heavier or light board? You end up spending the next few hours surfing with the orcs. Interrupted only briefly, we need to bomb the hell out of some frob lobster guys. Uh, this one? Shrug it off? Is that a thing that can happen? I don't... I didn't know that they could be dismissed. Oh, here it is. Okay. Is it that easy to get a song unstuck from your head? Not in my experience. Amidst the wreckage of ancient washed-up ships, you find a large crate, half buried in the sand and muck. You haul it up to the shore with much heaving and straining and props the lid to discover that it's filled with lead bars and assorted fishing weights. Lead! The most valuable of all commodity- Oh, wait, no, no. I'm thinking of gold and platinum. No, wait, no. Those aren't particularly valuable either, are they? Uranium? Ah, I must be thinking of uranium. Heavy, extremely valuable, yeah. When poking around piles of wreckage along the coastline, you find a crate that appears to be undamaged. Nothing that it has is valuable stenciled on, no, noting that it has valuable stenciled on the side. You excitedly pull it free the debris and pry it open. It appears to be full of carved driftwood animals. What the heck? Poorly made trinket, but since it comes from a distant land, it's pretty valuable here. Tromp along the coastline for a while, looking for the alchemist's washed-up gunpowder shipment, but not finding anything of value. Suddenly you catch a glint of sunlight off of something shiny. Brushing away the sand, you find an old Coca-Cola with a piece of paper inside. You fish the paper out, unroll it. Oh, we're actually going to read the paper and not just throw it away and keep the bottle? Help me! I'm trapped inside a Coca-Cola bottling plant! Huh. Well, at least you can get the deposit on the bottle. Let me just take the bottle. Uh-huh. I bet I could use this to make alcohol somehow. I bet somehow I could use it in a recipe. Oh, here we go, our first frog lobster! You spot two of the local frog locks frog lobster men squatting on the beach. They've decked themselves out in swirly tattoos, seagull feathers, and other such accoutrements. Some sort of shamanistic guard. So you see close, sneak closer and duck behind some wreckage to observe them more closely. They take turns scattering a collection of small bones, fish skulls, and carved pebbles onto the sand and studying them intently. It appears to be some sort of divinatory ritual. And after watching carefully for a few minutes, you gain new insights into the workings of the universe. Then one of them groans and hands a fistful of high, shiny beads to the other, and you realize that they're actually just shooting dice. Still, there's no take-backs in cosmic understanding. Uh, oh, here we go. You hear some kind of commotion further down the beach, and your curiosity gets the better of you. Following the sound, you discover a bunch of teenagers having a party, playing rock and roll music, and dancing up a storm. Figuring, what the heck? You join in and show off your moves. Suddenly, a frog lobster guy bursts out of the surf and charges into the crowd. Dee Dee starts to scream, but the monster suddenly starts doing the mashed potato and everyone cheers. The party continues full string, right up until the point when Frankie gets eaten. Still, apart from that, that it was a pretty groovy scene. 
Uh-oh. Some of your fingers are gone. It really hurts. And it's going to take a little while for them to grow back. Muscle minus three. After a half hour or so searching the wreckage-strewn coastline for the alchemist's lost gear with no success, you decide to take a nap. You wake up with a pain in your right hand, probably because it's in the mouth of one of the local lobster frogs. Mm, those were some of my favorite fingers, too. Oh my gosh, finally we're fighting. Where's the gunpowder? With a shambling, hunched-over gait, horrible, rotten fish smell, and rudimentary language that sounds like a drowning moose, a lobster frogman is one of the most pathetic, yet simultaneously one of the most annoying, of the kingdom's monster population. Two, two barrels of gunpowder. You wander along the beach, looking for any evidence of the alchemist's lost cargo, while keeping an eye out for dangerous natives. Suddenly, as you make your way around a large stone outcropping, you encounter a man dressed in ragged goat skins, carrying a goatskin umbrella, and with a little frog lobster man hopping along behind him. He appears to be a great bit more surprised than you are. A human? I have not seen another human, oh, these many years, ere I was shipwrecked upon this savage coastline. You wouldn't have any cheese, would you? I've been dreaming of the stuff, toasted mostly. I think I do. Wait, uh, no, apparently I don't. You glance sideways at the lobster frog who's found a top hat somewhere and is doing a little dance. Oh, don't mind him. That's my manservant. Carl Vember the Seventh. I call I call him that on account of it was the day I found him. How about a potato? Oh, you'd no idea what I'd do for a simple mashed potato. I've had naught but fish and seaweed to eat these last three miserable years. Haven't you ever left the beach in all that time? This island is positively swarming with people. There are hippies and frat boys all over. Well, I mean, they're orc frat boys, to be fair, not human ones. Do they have potatoes? Uh, well, no. You might get some tofu, though, or watery urine-flavored beer. <sighs> I'll stick with my seaweed, thanks. He shuffles away. You watch him go and notice he's forgotten his goat hide umbrella. Mm, meat smithing component for some reason. Weapon, one-handed umbrella. It's made out of goat hide. Poorly tanned goat hide. It's got the legs and head on, for crying out loud. So, it's not good for keeping the sun off, but fly... Or, it's good for keeping the sun off, but flies? Not so much. Maybe I'm part troll. <laughs> Maybe that's why they grow back. Okay, let's see. Uh... Hmm... I have to remember to drink my milk. It does a body good. Ah, uh, do 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 do. Oh, was this? Meat and deluxe layer cake. Whoa, size ten. This is a big vanilla sheet cake that has been folded up with some delicious chocolate to make a dessert sensation. The sensation of having eaten a whole buttload of cake. Well, let's do this. Where is it? Ah, yeah, that'll, 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 that'll do. Really, eating a cake will make me stronger and more magical and more moxious I'm gonna go eat an entire cake now by myself sounds like a good idea and I'm gonna eat some we're pretty much done aren't we uh, what's something that only eats one food 
somewhere in here. There's something. Okay, so we have 74 adventures that we can continue. Uh, oops, wrong way. Uh, next time. Next time we'll eat chow mein. What's this? He starts to float some strewn beach for a while, looking for the alchemist's lost gunpowder shipment. You're, able to you're unable to find any, and briefly consider that there might be some kind of conspiracy to keep you from finding it. You decide, however, that such a gunpowder plot would be partly mental, if not completely insane. You wander further along the beach, trying to remember what was so important about the fifth of Boo's timber, anyway. Where you discover a large wooden crate stenciled with a red cross that is the symbol of the pharmacist guild. Prying up them later, you find scurvy cures that must have been lost en route to the oblig obligatory pirate's cove. Obligatory, bleh. Okay. Error! Limes do not cure scurvy. Lemons do, though. Rum? I have no idea. I, I, I don't know. I don't think it would. You need citrus fruit, not booze, I think. But oranges would cure it. Limes would cure it. Plenty of things would cure scurvy. But not limes. An interesting footnote in history, for anyone who doesn't know it. The British figured out that lemons cured scurvy. And they made a rule. And all of their ships had to have lemons. Lemon juice. However, there was a small problem. You see, the British language at that time did not distinguish between lemon and lime. It was the same word for both fruit. It was just, oh, some of them are green, some of them are yellow. Same thing, right? So they called both of them limes. But lemon wasn't a word. They just refer to it all as limes and limeade. Well, for whatever economical reason, they started going with the green ones instead of the yellow ones at some point. And then they did some studies and determined, oh, it turns out that limes don't help prevent scurvy. Oh, well, and they threw, stopped doing that, threw that out. And people continue to suffer and die horrifically because scurvy is freaking horrifying for many years until somebody finally rediscovered the cure for scurvy. There's not a whole lot of cases in history of actual regression in technology this is one of the few instances in history where technology actually went backwards. I mean, you can call I mean medical medical knowledge in this case. But yeah, no, limes not not a scurvy cure. <laughs> nope. I should have a word with the pharmacists guild of loathing. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what's this? While shifting through the ubiquitous piles of driftwood and wreckage along the beach, you come upon a skeleton dressed in the remains of the loathing Navy commander's uniform and lying in a mess that may or may not have once been a ship. The skeleton appears to be clusting two rusty steel ball bearings in one hand and a can of strawberries in the other. You briefly cut ponder the moral implications of bogarting a dead man's strawberries, but ultimately decide that he doesn't need them. You do, however, decide to leave the man his ball bearings, since it's so rare that you see a skeleton with a pair. Alright, let me see what am I going to do. I had an idea, a thing I felt I needed to do. And then that joke was just, it just, it just blew all thoughts out of my head. I remember now. I was taking that off. 
in hopes that I could get this done faster. Dergrosh! Holy crap! Big way along the coastline, through piles of driftwood and broken planks left for decades of wrecked ships. You don't find any of the alchemist gunfire gunpowder, but you do spot one of the indigenous frog lobster guys shuffling along the water's edge, figuring on an easy kill to justify the time otherwise wasted on a floatsome strewn beach, you start towards him with your weapon rage. He sees you and shouts that in alarm, and about 15 million more of the slimy bastards run out of the surf and beat the hell out of you. Jerks. Okay, we'll go with all that. Hopefully. There we go. Got the jump on him. Perfect. Alright. That makes three. There are sure a lot of different things that happen here. I have not seen what you buffeted me with. What have I been buffeted with? We'll find out in a second. Is it this? Oh, monsters will be more attracted to you. All right, cool. I found a wool hat. Huh. It's not bad. Damage absor absorption of plus 20. This green wool hat with a pom-pom on top. If you're looking for a hat that'll keep your head warm, this may just be the thing. After that, a wise man said, if an apple seed turns to wings, it will fly away like a butterfly. And if a butterfly turns into an apple seed, it'll just lay there on the ground. Yeah, I don't know what that means either. I don't think it's called a pom-pom. I honestly don't know why hats have those things all the time, but, I mean, they put them on hats all the time. Just silly, f silly balls. I don't know, but the fuzzy things, if one falls off, it doesn't, the hat still works just as well either way. I, I don't know why they put those things on them, honestly. It's almost more difficult to find hats that don't have those on them. I mean, unless you were weird and wore like baseball caps or something. We don't have very many baseball caps around these parts. Around these here parts, it's either cowboy hats or just warm hats. Everyone has one of the two. Yes, cowboy hats. Uh, it's a local thing. One of the bars, maybe multiple of the bars do with Arctic cowboys. I have never asked. I don't, I don't need to know. It's fine. It's just a local thing. Whatever. Um, I'm trying to see. Maybe if I go under recent items. I just want to know. Four. That's what I thought I had. I have no opinion on them either way. They're just... They just exist. Here we go. Finally. Five. Oh. Let you escape from combat without spending an adventure. Maybe. As I was saying. Five kegs of gunpowder. Ah. Ah, ah. My gunpowder! Big boom! Big, big boom! Thank you! Bumpity bump, 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 bumpity bump. He gazes at you thoughtfully for a few seconds, then a smile lights up his face and he says, My life! Er, my bombs for you! My bombs for you! Cool. Darn. 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 
We will have to fight our way through this army some more. Boy, this war, I might not be able to get through all of it in... Whoa, this is new. This is the saddest thing known to man. Even sadder than the tears of a clown. It's a giant beer keg with no beer in it. Not only that, but the frat boys put on tracks, installed a meat engine, and some armaments. And are using it as a tank. Tanks a lot, you jerks. Hmm. That one adventure where? But do I have any use for an exploding hacky sack? None of these things do enough damage to matter. <laughs> crunch, crunch, crunch. Oh, what's this? This is a ground troop of the Frat Boy Army. I'm amazed at how many different things there are on this battlefield. He was an expert at ballistic brewing. He uses beer bongs to wage chemical warfare with cheap, skunky beer. We see a platoon of charging Frat Boys get mowed down by a hippie. Remember, Fran? Remember, kids. A short-range weapon, like a paddle, usually does poorly against a long-range weapon, like a diggeriduka. I really want to see this war from the other side, though. I really want to swap sides. <laughs> what is this? Distressed demon. F oh, frat warrior fatigues, part one and two. All right. Servers of this pin encrusted with a seemingly random power pattern of tiny fake jewels in various colors and shapes. You consider prying them out and arranging them in groups of three or more, but you're pretty sure that you'd lose them if you tried. Oh my gosh. Now we're getting somewhere. Cover and see a funk of hippies round up a bunch of frat boys to use as prisoners of war. Since being a hippie prisoner involves lounging around inhaling clouds of smoke and eating brownies, you're somewhat jealous. Since it also involves non-stop olfactory assault, you're somewhat less so. Come on, I just need one more piece of gear. And then I can be a turncoat, and I can give the frat boys all the information on what the tippies are up to. Their battle plans and everything. Okay. At this point, we're at the taking prisoners point. Okay. See a nearby war hippie elder shaman making a series of complex hand gestures. A flock of pigeons swoops down from the sky and pecks the living daylight out of a whole platoon of frat boys. Well, it was my job. Remember, my job was to start a war and get them to slaughter each other as much as possible. And also end it quickly. That's what I was sent here to do. You're fighting a member of an elite subunit of the Frat Boy Ar Army, whose motto is, A Brotherhood of One, brah. His mission is infiltrate sorority orc houses and steal the sorority orc's underwear. Does, is there such a thing? I've seen it in multiple anime. And I've always believed it was just some kind of joke. I find it difficult to believe that a person would have interest. Like, 
if, if you wanted underwear of any variety, you could just walk into a Walmart and purchase it <laughs> as much as you wanted. The dangers inherent in this mission are only surpassed by the inherent sleaziness involved. Panty raiders are generally more stealthy and more prone to displays of violence than normal frat boys, which isn't saying much. No one is sure what the panty raiders do with the panties after they collect them, but somehow the pro whole process ends in profit. He vanishes and reappears behind you, at which point he ties a thong around your throat. You gasp in disgust for the air. Oh, strangulated for one turn. Continually take damage. You're being strangled. It's really difficult for you to breathe. You're seeing spots and turning blue. Hmm. I don't know, man. Fetishes are just one of those things I don't know what to, I can't make heads or tails of. It seems to just be absolutely anything. Like, severed heads, inflated, being eaten. It's like, what? What is any of this? Could any of this possibly be real? It all seems very unreal to me. But who knows? People are weird. Still need one more something. And I'll have a full set. Oops, did I just accidentally... Eh, no. Did I really have enough skills to warrant that many pages? God, it just keep giving me beer bombs. Yeah, I want to explore the other side areas. I just really want to change costumes. I really want it. Naughty sorority Norse. A sorority girl was on her way to a costume party. And she was, like, dressed as a naughty nurse. Because, like, the sexy stewardess, the sexy pirate, the sexy referee, the sexy roller skater, the sexy plumber, the sexy trains conductor, the sexy pacer girl... The sexy carpenter, sexy auto mechanic, sexy cable TV technician, sexy tax driver, sexy sex blah 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 Robin Hood, Border Patrol agent, fast food, persecuted witch, mental patient, teddy bear, B, were already taken. Anyway, she totally got drafted. She taps her high heel impatiently. That's what you did with getting the jump on me? Okay. She notices your cut arm and force rubbing alcohol on it. It's like for sanitation? As you howl in agony. Could have been worse. It could have been salted lemon juice. Uh, this bartender isn't a frat boy. She's the outside help the frat boys used to hire for the really good parties. She's known more for her bottle-slinging and table-dancing skills than her mixology, but she always breathes life into any social gathering. Just don't take her home, rumor has it. You'd rather gnaw your arm off than wake up next to her. She calls you over and whispers something to your ear that makes you blush. And no, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm extra vulnerable to sleaze for the next ten adventures. Thunk. I still don't have the whole set. I 
This is an extremely fortunate member of the 500th Infantry Division. Yeah. Just looking at... Just looking at the air su smug superiority entitlement around the... Around them makes you feel insignificant. Then you shake it off. It ain't you. No, it ain't you. You ain't no councilman's son, and that's just fine by you. Yeah, sure. I'd love to have the missing part. I just... I just want to want to switch sides. I want to see what the other side, what crazy things that the hippies have to fight against. Stupid conspicuous absence of pirates. All right, let's see. We got a junkyard here. Next to that barrel with something burning into it. Near the abandoned refrigerator. Well, at least we could hide from an atomic explosion in that. Over where the old tires are. Out by the rest of our car. Hey, I see you're a soldier uh, of some sort. Man, the uniforms really have changed since back in my day. What war was I in? Oh, you know, the one between the Cola Wars and now. I'm sure there's a whole history of it somewhere. Anyway, I'm hoping you'd help a fellow military man out. Have you a few minutes? Uh, sure. What what, what do you need? So when I was in World of War, I was a bombardier for the Air Force. One day, I looked out the window of the plane and saw something on the wing. Some thing on the wing. The funny thing is, I'd been trying to get kicked out of the service for a while at that point. Trying to convince them I was insane. They said not wanting to get in a plane and get shot at wasn't insane, so I had to keep flying. Anyway, once I told them about the gremlin I saw, they gave me a Section 8 without even having to put on a dress. Reference to MASH? We already had a reference to Catch-22. The gremlin followed me here, though. For a while, I kept him as a pet, but then when I tried to give him a bath, he multiplied. There are two swarms of eleven gremlins running around here. I keep wanting to fix up some of the old junker cars here, but I can't because they stole my tools. I have absolutely no idea how to catch twenty-two of the creatures. Hell, there's probably even more of them by now. Even worse, some dumb scientist was up here the other day. He did all sorts of experiments. The gremlins are mutating. Anyway, so I'm missing my entire... molybdenum tool set. A hammer, a screwdriver, pliers, crescent rents. You could probably use this magnet to get them away from the gremlins. If you can get me my tools, I could probably fix up some of these cars for the war effort. Uh. Alright, hold on, hold on. Oh, wait, I bet it's in, uh, hold on, I gotta... There it is. Beer helmet, of course. A sturdy plastic helmet with cans of beer secured to either side, with straws running out of each beer into your mouth. Because what good is going to war if you have to leave your beer at home? And what could be more fashionable than a hat that's also a six-pack of beer? Well, just about anything, really. But still, it's a decent piece of equipment. Alright. Hold on. Tattoo me. Ha <laughs> broken bottle. Of course. Drunken brawling. How typical. I defecate on the canvas, but I don't want to waste either material. Be gone. Alright, let's see. No, no, let's, we gotta do this. You head out on the battlefield, ready for action. You're startled by a frat soldier who runs up with a box full of stuff. Hey, brah, you forgot to get geared up. Take the stuff, brah. What is all this? Well, the first thing is a paddle. That's for beating up hippies. Second thing is a stack of beer bombs. That's for blowing up hippies. A third thing is a paddle phone. That's for... 
calling up hippies? No, bra, this is a brand new battle phone. Plays music, takes pictures, gets me a beer. You can even call people on it. Well, you can go if you get the right buttons. I mean, it's really small. Oh, damn, where'd it go? There it is. Anyway, if you want to get some help from HQ, you got to use this thing to send them a text message. We don't want the hippies intercepting our communications. So you got to do it in code, brah. Like, if you need a nurse, send the message, don't trip. If you need to call someone in some armored support, send your lover, and it'll be there before you know it. Don't use it too often, though, brah. Those legacy guys back at HQ are hella busy. I gotta run, brah. There's a whole lot of us that need to get outfitted. Good luck. A war hippie wind talker. This hippie is wearing a contemplate complicated head harness bedecked with a variety of wind chimes. She serves as a focal point for the wind chime based communications network. She marches towards you with bells on. When she hits the high notes, you randomly get blown up. Hippie homeopath. This is a hippie that knows that all ailments, including injuries, are caused not by microorganisms or physical trauma, but by disturbances in the vital life energy that keeps us whole and in tune with Gaia. You know... There was a point in history when homeopathy arguably was a good idea. This is because at that point in history, medical knowledge was not so good. And regular doctors would try to put mercury in your body in large doses to cure many of your ailments. Among a litany of similar medical practices. But the homeopaths, they believed in do no harm. <laughs> they were like, no, we're going to just give you water, okay? <laughs> I'm oversimplifying, but that's kind of... There was a point in history when this was actually not the worst thing you could do to yourself. <laughs> When you were sick. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, I write fantasy novels. I've learned a lot about medical knowledge of the past. I eventually concluded that against some objections from some, some people who read my stuff, like, oh, you should totally put in all this stuff you know about medieval medical knowledge and stuff, and they should actually be doing these things. And I was like, no. No, I won't. I'm not going to do that. Because I concluded that if I put in a whole bunch, because there's nobody there to call out the shit that, that you know, because they'd all be living in that time period, so they believe it. And if I put in a whole bunch of crazy stuff that doesn't work somebody somewhere would read it and then they'd find themselves in some horrible situation someday and they'd remember having read somewhere that they can do this thing to cure it so I decided no anybody who does anything medical in anything I write has to be something that's at the very least not go you know at, at the very least does kind of work. <laughs> uh, so they te my, my characters tend to do a lot of things like pack an injury with honey and stuff like that. Because at least that is actually, you know, kind of medical. <laughs> Not as good as, you know, having things like hydrogen peroxide and stuff, but still, you know... Uh, a war hippie dread squad. This is one of the armored units. How is it an armored unit? You're not even riding a giant beer keg. In this case, that means a hippie with his girlfriend on his shoulders, both of whom have reinforced their long, nappy dreadlocks with several layers of filthy wax. The guy on the bottom is also carrying a digger and a duca, a weapon for creating incredibly boring music and incredibly explosive rockets. Usually these units are deployed to allow short women to see better at 
inter interminable jam band concerts. But this one seems to be intent on beating you down. Okay. Funk. A war hippie Baker from the Hippie Army's 420th Infantry Division, Baker Company. You recognize the Baker Company boys for their bloodshot eyes, thin haze of smoke that always surrounds them, and the fact they're almost always snacking. This one's got the smoke, but instead of snacking, he's marching towards you with a lead pipe in his hand and a fierce gleam in his glassy, bloodshot eyes. Hmm. We're not getting the added kabooms and stuff from this. A war hippie rigor. This is one of the hippies from the 1965th Infantry Division. The Jerry Riggers, as they're going to be called. They're renowned for their ability to make a bomb out of pretty much anything they find lying around. But there's... We're not getting the random explosions and things anymore. Stop, children. What's that smell? It's a member of the hippies' 12th Infantry Division, Gaia's Armpit. They've distinguished themselves from the other infantry divisions by cultivating a stench that's even more legendary proportions and using that st stench in proud defense of the hippie nation. Oh, I see. He advances towards you, of course. You knew that because you smelled him from coming from a hundred yards away. But I want to see everything. Oh. I guess I'll stick with the army I've already been supporting. Once I go a little bit further with this. Oh, yeah, it's all communication. It's wind chime. Cool. Yeah, I'm only seeing the basic enemies here. I see I've shifted the tide of combat pretty far to one side. About a few buttons of the phone, you hear the rumbling of a nearby keg tank. It rolls up and opens a f fires a volley of beer cans at her. She rubs a pineapple rind over your cuts and scrapes, saying she needs to enlarge them to let the healing power in. <sighs> yeah, I'm only going to see the basic units. I'm not going to see, like, all the awesome stuff. Unless I fight for a whole long time, I guess. Hmm... Alright, I'm going to go and I'm going to try to do the scrapyard. I seem to find their gear more easily. Alright, switch back. Back to the war hippie mode. War hippie mode engaged. Hmm. Oh wow, look at the look at what's happened to the battlefield at this point. You can see that the frat boys have seriously taken a pummeling. But I want to wipe out both sides. I'm not going to be able to do it in one day, obviously. I'm going to have to come back, but I want to completely wipe out both sides. To that end, you know what? I am going to I am going to stick to this for now. Yeah. Yeah, I am. I'm going to completely wipe out both both ends. So we're going to do this side quest for the frat boys. Yeah, okay, let's see. You're fighting an AMC gremlin. An ambulatory motor car gremlin. Basically, it's a slimy, foul-tempered, feigned, clawed little bastard which has used spare parts in a junkyard to build itself a little car to drive. All it needs is a little funny hat, and it could go around pelting children with hard candy. As it is, the wheels just drastically increase this Kremlin's clawing and maiming radius. Switches on its high beams. Ah! Don't you hate jerks who do that? There's precise counting involved. Oh, I'm going to try my best, though. Bat-winged gremlin. 
Gremlins, on a whole, are slimy, rotten, mottled green creatures with more warts, fangs, and claws than you can shake a stick at. This gremlin takes the whole good old-fashioned nightmare fuel theme one step further. It has gigantic leathery wings growing out of its back. As such, this gremlin is a lot more effective than a gremlin-winged bat. Since gremlins don't normally have wings, gremlin-winged bats are just mice. It swoops around around above you, cackling madly and getting ready to power dive you. Eh. Everything just goes down in one hit for me. Vegetable gremlin. This isn't a gremlin in a permanent vegetative state. That would not be particularly threatening. And in stunningly poor taste. No, it's a gremlin that is a mad sign that imagines some sign mad... It's a gremlin that some mad scientist was using to test genetic splicing for plants. So it's your basic slimy green fang clawed monstrosity, only with cabbages, tomatoes, and carrots growing off at odd angles. Science! Ah. Boop boop doo smash. <laughs> I like having infinite mana again, thanks to that lovely IV. Okay, I don't know what exactly I'm trying to do in this area, but I seem to have run out of adventures at it. Ah, uh, darn. Well, all right then. Huh. Well, I do have a whole bunch of junk here. You walk into the quartermaster's room. He's busy using a pocket knife to scratch a crude, in every sense of the word, bit of graffiti into the cu countertop. So it takes a few minutes for him to notice you. Oh, hey, brah. Quick, look, and tell me if I spelt this word right. Okay, it ends in... It ends with is, not us. But you're close. Thanks, brah. Ah, good, brah. You've got some gear to trade in. Here's what you can get for it, brah. Huh. One side deals in dimes, the other side deals in quarters. I see. Cast iron! Oh my gosh. These paddles date to back to the establishment of the Orcus Frat, back before wood was discovered. It's important to never, ever clean this paddle. The years of accumulated sweat and grime lend a unique flavor to the punishment. For those who didn't know, um... Back before modern non-strict frying pans, when you had iron skillets, you're not supposed to ever, ever clean them. I had this explained to me by my grandmother. I don't use cast iron skillets, though. I use modern non-stick frying pans. Of course, this isn't so good if you want to make candy. If you want to get sugar to melt instead of burn... It's pretty much impossible to do in a nine-stick frying pan. Anyway. Hmm. Hmm. beer -a -pult. It's a three-handed catapult. Designed for launching at very high speeds. Balloons filled with nasty, skunky beer. See, I don't imagine how you can launch... I, I don't know how you can launch um, water balloons at very high speeds without them, you know, breaking. I don't get that. Oh, what is this? Food grilled over fire. A foil wrapped packet of sizzling delights. Fresh off the mess hall barbecue. It's certified nutritious and packed with energy that'll keep you bashing in hippie faces. Oh, that sounds nice. Kick-ass kicks. War tongs, yep. Okay, well. Super amplified boombox. 
Plenty of nice stuff. Anyway. Next time, we'll have to do the remaining quests. And finish the war! It's a two day long war. For now, let's finish out the day with... Now, I had something that sounded like it would let me drink more. Where is it? Where is it? It was a shoes, wasn't it? The flask flops. What? Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, er, hold on. Okay, take those off. Okay, where'd it go? Hooch. Zero of three. So that's not alcohol. That's something else? What in the world is hooch if it's not alcohol? It's got to be alcohol. It must be. Right? So no booze on go? What? Hooch is a very hidden mechanic. How could it be hidden? It's right there. I just don't know what to do with it. That's all. Potency five. Uh, vodka and tonic. Okay, now I could go with a number five. Oh, let me see. I don't have anything good left in the spleen items. Oh! When they do a live stream? Oh. Hmm. So I just basically would have to be online when they're doing a thing on Twitch. Okay. I really wish I could just hit use multiple on these. Why does using a barbell make... Why does a barbell have toxicity? How does it get used up? Oh, well. We shouldn't be asking these questions, should we? A time-twitching tower. Oh, that sounds awesome. It's unlikely to happen while I'm playing, though. All right. And finally... So tomorrow we'll try to finish this whole adventure. I think a size 5 is about as good as I'm going to get. Uh, I guess I don't have any reason to have these flask flops on, then. Hmm. Can I equip multiple? No, you can't equip multiple. I know, I know. It's worth a try. Okay, it wasn't. Whatever, I tried anyway. I'll just put that on. Ooh. So, until next time and every time, this is Hadrix signing off. Bye.